Hello, my name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we're about to unlock the power of ServiceNow. I want to thank all 884 subscribers. Really appreciate your support. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention was that only 13% of people who watch this channel are subscribers. So if you've been watching the channel, I'd really appreciate it. If you click on subscribe, it should be a little red button over here, and that'll help me out get to that goal of 1,000. Um, so we're almost there. I'm happy to report. And today, we are going to address a comment that was put on the channel. So this comes from Ashish Jaitley. Um, Ashish asks, how to create a query to get the total number of updates an individual has made in the tickets. So Ashish, by ticket, I'm assuming that you're referring to incident. An individual, I guess you mean anyone that uh, made comments in the work notes, etc., in the activity log. So... Um, let's go ahead and take a look at our list of incidents and see the different uh, columns that we have here. So we, so we have the updated column, which is basically the last date that it was updated, um, updated by the user ID. And we'll notice here that it also has system included, so that's not really going to help us out much. And then the updates um, can go up into the hundreds, I guess thousands, depending on how long the ticket is open and what's happening with it. So this doesn't really help us out at the individual level. It just tells us for the record um, what's happened. So if we were to go into incident record, uh, we see here this incident that was opened on the 1st of March. And we see here there are a bunch of updates. And I said, you know what, there's got to be a way to, to quantify this a little bit. So then what I did was I took a look at the related lists and did a little bit of research and there's this related list here called audit records. So you can bring that in, and then what will happen is at the bottom of the form, and also, by the way, to, con to get to that related list field, um, excuse me, that screen, you would go configure, and then related lists, and it would open up that screen. <clears throat> so I brought in this audit records uh, related list, and this kind of shows us some stuff, but as you can see here, there's a lot of stuff going on here. And it looks like every time I hit save, um, there were several updates being made. Um, so the system kind of tracks it that way too. So then I said, you know what? Um, this probably isn't optimal because it's not giving us an accurate amount of updates that were made. So then I went over to the good old reporting module. Um, and I also um, looked at um, the sysaudit table itself. So let's take a look at the report. I'm sorry about that screen. Uh, don't pay attention to that. <laughs> so I created a report based on the sys audit table. And I just called it incident update audit. And uh, our type is one of my faves, which is the multi-level pivot. And then for our configuration here, I put at the top, we're going to do field name. And then I did something, a couple of rows here called document key created by old value, new value, because I, I don't know, maybe I was just uh, obsessed with the whole auditing thing. Um, I used to be an auditor for ISO 20,000, so maybe I wanted to see what the old value was versus the new value. That's fine. Um, one thing you might be up, uh, tempted to do is add this update count, but that's what I was just showing you, where it's that aggregate number. So you're going to see a huge number, like 250 something. It just depends on how many fields are being updated when the, the user uh, updates the ticket. So then, uh, let's see here, I put in a lot of conditions. And the reason why I put in a lot of conditions was because uh, it would max out the system and, and tell me that if I just ran it on the incident table, it would just uh, tell me that there's too many records um, for the output. So you might run into this problem anyway, just because your enterprise is so huge. But I just did create it on, and when we do create it on, remember, we're doing created on against what's our table name? Sys audit. So basically, this is the update here. So meaning that not when the ticket was created, but when the update was created. The table I put was incident, and then the fields that I wanted to hone in on were comments, short description, work notes. And I'm not sure if that's what you're looking for. I just thought that those might be the three that could possibly change, but uh, you could find the uh, the names of the actual fields and then you know just do the same construction here where I did this you know or 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 um, and again you know it's not not too hard to do so let's scroll down here and see what the output was I did 
uh, updates on two tickets, and I even impersonated uh, Abraham Lincoln um, just to test it out and make sure that all the updates were being included. So as you can see here, we have something called the document key, and what the document key is, is actually the sys ID. So if we were to cut and paste this, and again, this is all that's available to us on this table, meaning the, the sys audit table. So again, Ashish, I didn't get too much detail on what you're looking for, if you're looking for other attributes from the incident itself, but the only thing that that's going to be able to take you back to that incident um, will be this document key. So I'm not sure if that helps you or not, but I wanted to show you that it is possible just to show you the updates. So here we had a couple of updates from Abe Lincoln, then we had three by myself, and then for this ticket here, we had three. But as you can see here, it totals it, at least this is the way I constructed it, and, and you can change it around however you want, um, but I thought that maybe this is best. Um, you could also have it by user. So if we wanted to take um, the configuration here and let's go to created by and move that up and see what happens here when we hit run. And maybe this will be better for you, I'm not sure, but basically it shows us here Abraham Lincoln and then it shows us that on this one ticket because it's the same document ID. Um, we had two updates by Abe Lincoln on this one. As you can see for me, um, I had three updates on this one ticket here and then three down here. So it's just a matter of how you want to construct this. Um, but the count here um, will, t will tell us the, uh, the, the total number um, uh, for uh, the, the total right here for, for the actual user in this case, right? So the total here, the count will be two. He made two updates. For me, I made six updates, but it was among two different tickets. So again, you could do it either way. So this is... Um, one way I feel that you could probably get to close to getting to the answer, but again, if you don't have those incident numbers and you're happy with the um, the sys IDs, you can do it that way. So let's um, let's take one of these um, sys IDs and let's go back to our uh, incident list here. So if I really wanted to look it up, I'll just cut and paste that, and then it would bring up this incident here. So again, I'm not sure if this is exactly what you're looking for, but this is a method to do that. I'm sure that there are developers that could come up with ways to bring in the, the incident information. Maybe you create a database view or something like that. Um, but this is one thing I would just want to show you. It is possible to actually um, to construct this using the sys audit table. Okay, my name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we just unlocked the power of ServiceNow.